the inner court of China's forbidden city was the emperor's private realm, where no other men were allowed to linger for too long. Officials, military personnel, and even male relatives of the emperor were required to leave the inner court at night, and any person who entered unauthorized faced the death penalty. The only men who were allowed to stay in the inner court were those who had been rendered sexually impotent through castration. These were the eunuchs of China. While the Forbidden City was only constructed during the Ming Dynasty in the 15th century, the practice of castration and the use of eunuchs in China can be traced much further back. In ancient China, castration was one of the five punishments, a series for physical punishments meted out by the Chinese penal system. Nevertheless, castration was also a means of getting a job in the imperial service. Emasculation was thought to turn eunuchs into sort of non-humans that could enter the emperor's realm without violating it, presenting a threat or undermining the emperor's privacy. An army of eunuchs was attached to the forbidden city, primarily to safeguard the imperial lady's chastity. Confucian values deemed it vital for the emperor, seen as heaven's representative on earth, to produce a direct male heir to maintain harmony between heaven and earth. Not wanting to leave anything to chance during a period with a high infant mortality rate, the world's largest harem was placed at the emperor's disposal to ensure enough heirs would survive into adulthood. Here's what it was really like being a eunuch in the Forbidden City. The Forbidden City was a symbol of imperial power and authority, and it was a home for thousands of eunuchs. Eunuchs were castrated male servants who served as palace guards, court officials, and personal attendants to the imperial family. They were castrated to ensure their loyalty to the emperor, as they were unable to father children or establish their own dynasties. Eunuchs were also believed to be less prone to corruption and sexual misconduct than their non-castrated counterparts. However, being a eunuch in the Forbidden City was far from glamorous. Eunuchs were castrated at a young age, usually before puberty, and often against their will. The castration procedure was dangerous and painful, and many eunuchs did not survive it. Those who did survive faced a lifetime physical and emotional trauma. Once castrated, eunuchs were no longer considered fully men and they were excluded from normal social and sexual relationships. Furthermore, eunuchs were not allowed to have families or children, as a result they faced numerous social and cultural stigma, as it was seen as a failure to fulfill one's duty to continue the family line, and they were not allowed to leave the forbidden city without the emperor's permission. This meant that many eunuchs spent their entire lives within the palace walls, isolated from the outside world. Despite their important roles in the imperial court, eunuchs faced discrimination and mistreatment from other palace officials. They were seen as inferior and often subjected to verbal and physical abuse. In some cases, eunuchs were even blamed for the emperor's mistakes or failures and were punished accordingly. Many eunuchs died in obscurity, their lives cut short by disease, accidents, or suicide. In spite of the challenges they faced, many eunuchs were able to gain significant power and influence in the imperial court. Some eunuchs were appointed to high-ranking positions, such as the chief eunuch, who had direct access to the emperor and wielded significant political influence. Other even managed to become infamous dictators of China, with power that surpassed that of the emperor. Regardless of the potential for influence, it was often desperation that drove young boys and men to undergo the castration process and dedicate their life to working in the palace. And besides working in the imperial city, there weren't many other opportunities for eunuchs who were shunned by the rest of society. By definition, the life of a eunuch literally came with sacrifices. The end of the Qing dynasty in the early 20th century brought an end to the Chinese imperial system and also the use of eunuchs. In 1924, the last 1500 eunuchs were banished from the Forbidden City. The last imperial eunuch, Sun Yao Ting, died in December 1996, thus bringing an end to an ancient practice that spanned several millennia.